Beginning Art, Lesson 4, Light and Shadow, Define Form. Now I have gone through magazines and collected interesting photographs. Um, right here I have one that shows light and shadow and I've noted that they're very important to making your art interesting. Try to draw these rocks without any shadows. Will it be more interesting with shadows? Okay, um, those are just notes I put on here so we can remember what kinds of things to discover as we draw something similar to these rocks. I'm going to zoom in a little bit if I can. Doggone this camera. Doesn't seem to zoom. Oh, maybe this does it. No. Okay, trying again just the regular way. I want you to see where the shadows are and the kind of weight it gives to each rock. Okay, now I'm going to draw these and I'll just first make a quick sketch and I'm using a pencil. So I will indicate the first rock. And the second rock. And the third rock. Now I'm just um, indicating how they're structured, sitting one on top of another. Some are really bigger and some are smaller. They're all fairly smooth. Now we don't have to do the entire group of rocks, so I'll just go this far for now. But then I want to say, let's go back and look at the shading. Capture some shadows here, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is indicate where the shadows lie, which is over in this area, because the light source is coming from this direction over here. If you can see, the light is coming from over here. So all the shadows are going to be on that surface. Now the shadow from the top rock casts a shadow on the bottom rock here and there's a lot less showing. So let's just roughly sketch these shadows in. And indicate their relationship to the rocks below and the rocks above. Now you can get into a lot of detail if you like, or you can just start getting the feel of how the rocks are laying on one another. Now, one thing we can do, remember, is smudging to soften the lines. And I really do prefer just using my fingers rather than other tools. Sometimes I'll use a Q-tip or a piece of tissue paper. Okay, so they have a little bit of depth to them already. Now I'm going to do something with this pencil that's called a woodless pencil. And the entire point is graphite, which gives us more of a sweeping you can co really color with the edge instead of the point, which I think is very nice. And I'm just going to 
do a little bit more here. You'll be working on your projects in a similar fashion. You might not want to do these rocks. You might want to look into a magazine and find something else. You might want to go outside and find some objects to create your own little setup. It doesn't have to be stacked rocks, but you want something that shows the weight and the texture. You want this to look interesting from all aspects. Now, see, I, I glance back up at this and I look down at my drawing. That's something you're going to be doing, changing your perspective. And remembering that some of these are very light rocks, some of them are darker. Some are very smooth, and some have a more porous texture. Experiment with the different pencils you're using, and come up with the best configuration that shows the weight and the structure the shading and the light. You can blend as much as you want. Now remember these don't have to be perfect. What you're doing right now is learning to use the pencil properly, to draw shapes to try and make it three-dimensional, as three-dimensional as you can. I have a little harder job holding the camera while I'm drawing. And you might have already noticed I'm left-handed. Um, you draw with the hand that you like to draw with, please. And don't just copy me. Use your imagination. And bring some shape and solidity. You want, you want it to be three-dimensional. You want shadow and light. That's what we're looking into right now, is shadow and light and the form. Now, uh, for homework, I want you to do something that I've been doing, which is going through magazines. Or if you don't have magazines, you can print out photographs off of the internet of subject matter. Get things that show things in nature, whatever kinds of things you want to go into. We'll be using some of these in another lesson. And I've actually made an entire pad with different photographs that I've taken from Nature Magazines. And we're going to see how we can use these as models, because models of human beings are expensive to hire. Uh, photographs, whether we have them from our own collection already, or from magazines, or if we find them and scan them on the internet, um, just for our own use, is perfectly good. Copy things out. Do your own study of whatever object you've chosen. And I want you to photograph it. And like always, I want you to sign it 
and put the date. Because eventually you're going to have quite a stack of studies that you've done. Now I'm indicating the ground here, but this isn't actually shown on the ground in the in the photograph. Go ahead and, and add details that you like and add more shadows than than you actually have. It's okay, it's art. You have what we call creative license and creating is what we're up to. I hope you have a creative week. Do collect photographs and objects to study. Draw either this stack of rocks or find something that you like better. I picked it because it's plain it's simple and it has lots of light and dark shading. That's what you want. So look for those things. Take a picture of what you've done and share it with the class. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon in Beginning Art.